talk a little bit about your family and where you live and like your husband, your kids and stuff like that? Sure. Um, I live in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. So not that far from, from you guys, I guess, but um, I'm from, I'm originally from New Brunswick. So I've lived in Ottawa for 16 years, I think, yeah, or since 2006. So yeah, maybe 16 years. And uh, I met my husband here at a show and we started our family like pretty soon after meeting each other. And we have, his name's Matt and we have three kids, um, Trey, Abby, and Theo. So Trey's 13 and Abby's 10 and Theo is seven. So yeah, they're like kind of my world. Um, aside from music and stuff, that's, yeah, that's my family. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. That's awesome. That's very <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's how it is with three kids. You're like, yeah, that's that's all. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're all great kids. I like. I love being a mom. I'm, I became a mom young. I think we've talked about this, right? So I, yeah, I was pregnant at 19, and then I had my oldest when I I was 20 when he was born, and it was kind of like when I think back now, I was like so. Like at the time I was like, oh yeah, I got this. Like I, you know, I want to be a mom. It's going to be great. But then I look at moms now and how like prepared they are for motherhood and planning it and everything is sorted. And I was just like, not like that at all. I was like, oh yeah, like just going into it as if it was not going to be that big of a thing. <laughs> I didn't need to be prepared as much as like, I see some, some moms and just like, wow, everything is like, you are ready. And I was just like, no. Oh. Well, I'm just mm -hmm. see how it goes kind of flying by the seat of my pants but it was it just felt so natural like even from the beginning to be a mom so um I think people tell me that all the time too like it kind of shows when I I'm able to handle like most situations as a mother pretty you know easily I had all my kids at home I had three home births so oh, wow that's yeah. incredible yeah no no drugs nothing like completely natural for all that's incredible. Yeah. That's yeah. I had mine were no drugs, but I had them all in the hospital. My yeah. last one I almost had at home, but my husband was like a little worried. So yeah, went to the hospital. He was like more like nervous than I was, but I'm like, mm, I <laughs> pretty much it almost happened at home. So I was happy with that. Oh, good. That's good. <laughs> it's hard to convince people. Like I remember with our first, like my husband and everybody was just like, "What?" You're like, like convincing of people that it was okay to do it at home took a lot but we had we have really great midwives and um it's all covered here so we didn't have to pay anything for midwives which is I think a little bit different than in the states but um yeah they sure. were so comforting and like able to answer any questions we had and I just thought about like so many people in the world where that's completely normal to have kids at home and it's a common thing and I think birth tends to be kind of blown out of proportion a little bit here is where it is a very natural normal thing for women to do and and we still all like obviously if anything were to happen we are close to a hospital or the midwives know ahead of time that like if we have to transfer you we know to do it sooner you know like they're I don't know I don't think there's that many incidents where things go wrong right like it, it's always they know what they're doing <laughs> right right so I yeah. kind of put myself in their hands and everything went went well except our youngest came came so fast that they didn't he came like my husband delivered him because oh boy yeah he, <laughs> it was like two hours from my first contraction to him being born like it was like boom 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 so fast what a bonding experience that's like beyond putting <laughs> ikea furniture together i think that's bigger than like putting the tent together at a festival like yeah it was crazy like i i'd done laundry it was making like homemade pizza that night and i started to feel like something i was like oh i think i might be having a contraction and then we put our other two kids to bed and i was like okay it's probably going to be like a long night because my other two were like eight or 10 hour labors. And then I lied down for a minute. And then I was like, I'm going to try and get some rest. The other two kids are asleep. And then I, my water broke, like when I lied down and I had only had like two, maybe three contractions at that point. And I ran to the bathroom and like felt the baby coming out. Like it was happening right there. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Oh so my I, God. I, it, it was so incredibly fast. So I ran back to the bed and I was like, Matt, the baby's coming out. And then we tried calling the midwife. 
and she was like call the par paramedics because they might get there faster so we had the paramedics on speakerphone while I was like while the baby was coming out and the entire time they were just asking us for our address and Matt was like the baby's head's coming out <laughs> and they're like what's your address <laughs> I was like, um but I remembered from our <laughs> Like they, they were not really helpful at all. And, but I was like, I remembered from my other two kids, like, cause I was like, you have to push the head is stuck. And I was like, I have to wait until I have the urge to push. Right. Like you probably remember that, like you need that mm -hmm. urge. I'm like, I can't just push if I don't have that feeling. So then it just took like a couple pushes and then he was out. We cleaned him off the towel, had him like latch on <laughs> breastfeeding. And then everybody came in like, paramedics midwives everybody and we were like baby's here like hey welcome <laughs> i was literally lying there like completely naked. <laughs> all these people coming into my house it was and like and the other two kids didn't wake up and everybody came in <laughs> checked on us it was all done and they left and then like we had our, our third kid it was it was wild we just looked at each other we're like did that just happen like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's so yeah. funny and the fact that the kids slept through it and they just wake up and they're yeah. like oh hey <laughs> you've got a little brother <laughs> yeah it was so wild it was like the craziest thing of our lives but i'm so happy everything turned out okay because there are you know cases where it doesn't and we're just so blessed and grateful that we made it through it and nobody was, nobody was good <laughs> It's incredible these stories of of what happens when people give birth. It's just yeah. that's so funny. Wow. I can't even imagine. That almost happened. We almost had our youngest in the car on the way to the hospital. And luckily my husband didn't oh, yeah. have to deal with that. So oh, stressful situation though, right? Like you're just like, oh my God. There's no yeah. time. Like it's like happening right now. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So I would love to know how old you were when you started playing bass. Um, I bought my first bass when I was 16. So I played guitar before that. I made my parents buy me a guitar, I think, when I was 13, like pretty young, 13 or 14, I think. And I started, I think we talked about that, like I started really getting into Dave Matthews and it was kind of like an instant, like I need to play music love that kind of just started so I would try and play a lot of Dave Matthews songs and then <clears throat> and then my friend was selling his bass and I kind of gravitated towards it like really quickly I'm like I really want to play bass so I uh I was working I had a job at that point so I saved up my own money and bought it off of him and started taking lessons I still remember some of my first bass teachers like they taught me some really great stuff um and uh yeah that was kind of the start of my playing. I don't remember. It was a white bass, but I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was a Squire. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I sold it at some point before moving out west and and then got back into it again when I came back here. So yeah. nice. Nice. So what made you pick up the guitar? What inspired you to do that? Um, yeah, like it, I think it was just seeing like to be honest, it was really like, it, it was probably Dave Matthews because my brother took me to my first show when I was like pretty young, 14 or 15, I think. And I was like an instant like obsession. Like I just, I had to go see them. You can even ask my friends in high school. They're like, Stephanie was always going to see Dave Matthews shows. And I think it just kind of clicked mm -hmm. that, I, that, that love for music, just like this was it. And I just kind of obsessed with it ever since <laughs> and I, I was like into music before then too but playing music was really kind of that's where it started and in uh, I remember in high school too we um like in music class I was all the other kids had to play the recorder or the like keyboard but I was able to play guitar with my friend because we played outside of school so I was like we were the kids we learned um we we're talking about this recently goodbye blue skies and uh blackbird and i still remember them like there's songs you know when you learn when you're like 15 16 and it's like it's just like muscle memory now i pick up the guitar and i can still play back blackbird no matter what it's like thanks to my like high school music you know, class but yeah that's pretty funny yeah. what do your kids think about you playing bass do they 
think it's cool or are they like embarrassed by it or yeah, it's kind of weird like I would expect that it's like and some people would expect them to be more musical because I am and Matt is a bit but they're kind of not and I think it's because I'm so obsessed with it it's like maybe it's not cool to like what mommy likes you know <laughs> I'm yeah. like yeah. You know, I, I get that feeling and they try, like when we watch live shows or streams, like they come in, but they're just not into it really. They don't, they don't get that same excitement that we have over it. They're like, oh, it's rock shows. They can, they're not that into it. But I think they like that I play, like they make me pictures all the time and say, it's like, your band is so good. Or like mommy, my daughter made like a really good one of us all playing on stage and so I think they're like, they think it's cool, but not like necessarily into the music yet. They're just like, oh, mom's in a band and she likes it. So. That's cool. They show their support in their own way. That's what my daughter does. She'll make like a, she likes to do the different apps on her iPad that make like logos and stuff. And so she'll make things. Oh, I made this for the podcast or, you oh. know, but other than that, she's just kind of like, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although she does take lessons with Joel. So she thinks oh, that's yeah, pretty awesome. That's so, so great. That's yeah. so cool. That she's doing that. She loves that. She gets really excited for that. So that's amazing. What a cool experience. Hey, those lessons are like so awesome. I know. Well, that's what I told her too. I'm like, I mean, think about it. When you look back, you're going to be like, I got to take lessons with this guy. Like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Very cool. Do you think they'll continue doing it? Like, I'm sure once tours start happening, they won't have time as much. But, like, well, I think honestly, there's going to. I don't think they're going to be able to tour in the capacity that they used to for a while. Like, they're going to be able to tour more but they're not going to be able to tour as much, I think, just because of probably like guidelines and maybe even personal guidelines of maybe wanting to quarantine or, you know, like I think there's going to be a lot of different factors. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I don't see it being as like jam-packed as it was before right now. Yeah. No, so, no, no. Like I mean, they probably still will do it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um you know, to kind of supplement, but I don't, I don't think they're going to be like as yeah. much as they yeah. were. I honestly, I'm, I see them more doing like more three or four night runs in places Yeah, yeah. because it's less travel for everybody involved. And that's just True. such a good thing for so many reasons now. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I think it's just, and it's much easier on the crew, like yeah, money wise for them and less people coming in and out. And I just, that's yeah. how I kind of predict maybe even for a lot of bands too. And I think it helps the venue too. If you do like a longer night run, I think in the mm. long run, the venues will get more money too. That's instead true. of just one know. night here and there. Yeah. I think those days they're done. Like they put in their time for that kind of touring. Right. And you see a lot of older bands that kind of get to that point where they're just like Fish or the Allman Brothers. They do a lot of just three nights here, three nights there, and you don't have to necessarily be going to a different town every night for 200 shows a year, right? So For sure, which, I mean, I like going to multiple places on a run. I mean, you know, I've done it. It's awesome to go from like Cleveland to Pittsburgh to wherever, mm -hmm. but I also like doing the multi-night run in one city because then you're kind of like in the city, you can kind of get a little comfortable with it and maybe yeah. visit different parts of it. And, you know, yeah. you get to enjoy it a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. It's not like rushing, getting in the car for five hours to the next town. For sure. Just grab like, some food in a bag and go. <laughs> Maybe get a nap if you're not driving. <laughs> for sure. <clears throat> so if, if I know correctly, you also run a daycare in your home. So talk about that. Like you're being a mom, you're doing this. That's got to be intense, especially now. I mean, I I hate to always talk about COVID, but of course we got to kind of talk about it. So I know, I mean, yeah. that's a lot. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, I mean, I've been doing it for 12 years now because my son is 13 and I started when he was one, I was just didn't want to go back to work and it made more sense to stay home. So I just started to kind of look after kids here and there. And then it just grew into like a full 
time business and very successful one. I've been doing, you know, great with it uh, every like all these years. But yeah, this year we kind of turned our basement into the classroom. So all the my three kids are down here doing school. And thankfully they're all very independent. So they kind of do their own thing. They come and go, they make their own lunches or there's like stuff they can just heat up at lunchtime in the microwave and I don't have to really do much for them. So I think if they were like younger, it would be a lot harder, but they're all like, they're really, it, it's not as crazy as it seems having them right. at home while I'm doing it. Like they kind of do their own thing a lot. So that, that really helps. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've just been, I've been doing it for a long time and it's, it's great. I'm, I feel like I'm kind of starting to like be ready for a change. I'm just trying to figure out what that is. And everybody tells me I should do music, but I'm totally like scared <laughs> and I was not afraid to admit it, that it's like, my husband's like, you're scared, aren't you? And it's like, I, I think I just can't. And I see, and I observe so many like full-time musicians and how, much work it is and how hard it is and I've even had some tell me like don't quit your day job you know <laughs> like keep your regular because you're never gonna like it's really hard to actually make it so and I have three kids and I'm 33 so it's kind of like there's all these factors that stop me from pursuing it and I don't know if how to like get over that hump but I'm trying <laughs> trying to like you know yeah, like seeing stuff like you, like it's really inspiring to always. I see in you know, so many women that are just living their dreams and going for it, and it's. I think I have to just get over those kind of hurdles, but I don't know. Anyways, I'm happy. Just I, do yeah. it. It's gonna be messy as fuck. It's gonna be awkward and messy, <laughs> and I'll tell you, there are so many times when I've done interviews and. I've had to pause and go yell at my kids or I've had to yeah. go and pause and wipe somebody's butt or, <laughs> I mean, if people only knew the backgrounds of, you know, like I'll take a photo and like my kid is in the distance, just <laughs> running around in his underwear, like it's chaos around here. Uh, you yeah, know, you but, never know it though. Like from the way that you just, your persona, you seem like you always got everything at, like handled. I'm like, that's just incredible. It's so amazing. Oh, it's no, it's, it's chaos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, that's reassuring. Yeah. It's no, it's do it. Just do it. Just do it. It's going to be guess, messy, but it's going to be awesome. And as the kids get older, like it does get a lot easier. Like my 13 year old helps all the time with like, mm -hmm. our youngest. they're really close. Thankfully, like they don't hardly ever fight the three kids. They're all really good. And they, I think that's what's helped like with this whole pandemic is that they were able to really like be friends like the three of them are friends you know when they couldn't go play with their other friends they had each other and it's like it's so heartwarming to see them like when they're going to the park together just the three of them or whatever they're like they're there for each other and it's I don't know it's been really nice to know that they're like they at least they always have each other <laughs> so if I'm not there and then mommy's off doing her things you know like and Matt's super supportive he's always around too he works from home so he's like He's not in a meeting, but he's like, he's always around, you know? So yeah, I just, I think I need to like, let go of that <laughs> and tell myself that I can do. And I want to, like the urge is there. Like I want to be doing other things. I just need to like take that step. Like you've never been able to do it, <laughs> you know? Make that change when you're comfortable, like a comfortable job, I have good money, you know? Like it's just hard to like take that step to, for sure <laughs> for sure well I mean it is a polar opposite you know being with kids all day all day and then you mm -hmm. know being a bass player in a metal band I mean that's <laughs> I the complete other side of the coin <laughs> I, know. I know I know but I love it like I love that like I, I have that part of me back because I put so much into mothering, like, especially the first few years, like I was so intensely, like it was all about my family and mom. And I didn't play bass that much. Like when my kids were really young, I hardly ever picked it up, but it was always there and I always wanted to. And yeah, finally in the past, I'd say like five years or so, I've really dedicated more time to like, okay, I want to do this. Like I want to pursue this dream of mine that I've always had to actually be in a band and and um, yeah, not let just the family life take over everything, right? I still need that part of me to be there and vibrant. And it's so like, 
it's just such a passion of mine I'm sure you can see I'm always posting about music and stuff because it's yeah. that's just what I'm like driven to do <laughs> I and mean, what I love doing and I could be tired like so tired from the day working all day and then I get to practice because sometimes we well when we used to practice before COVID and practice for three hours and not even like forget completely how tired I was because I'm just playing like such awesome fun heavy music and it's just like it's like yeah so that's when you know it's like you know, you're doing what you love I think a hundred percent and you know <clears throat> exactly what you said is my one of my driving factors for doing what I do was when my grandma passed away in like 2013, 2014, she just had like, she just had like no legacy. Like she, everybody, the only thing they really had to say about my grandma was just that she was like her mom and her grandma. And of course, you know, being a mother, you can never diminish the work that we put no. in you know like that you could work. never you know ever 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 but like you said there's so much more to like a human being and just like it kind of made me realize it was like why is nobody talking about like the woman that my grandma was like <laughs> why is nobody mentioning anything about that and so for me it kind of was like huh. you I know I want to like have something else that people can be like oh, I remember her from this, or I remember, you know, meeting her at this time and doing this thing with her. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. she just didn't have, like, these stories of things that she did. And and I always kind of remembered that and took that away and was like... She just put everything into being, like... Just which is, you know, again, like, I did the same thing you did, you know, when having my kid young and I had all these years where I just didn't really see a lot of music and was really focused on like being a mom and doing that whole thing and mm -hmm. as they get older and you kind of find your place in a different way you're just like okay yeah. it's all right okay. yeah <laughs> yeah and I think being in your 30s is a great time to take this on because you start to have like less fucks that you give I think it's true <laughs> I'm noticing that a lot yeah. it's kind of great because it's like I think in the in your 20s it's even more like not confident enough or like scared and now I'm just like no okay I'm just going with this I have that like yeah like you just said like I don't give a fuck this is what I'm doing I'm just gonna do this because really like who cares like exactly people, people are gonna hate whatever you do so you might as well enjoy what you're doing and exactly. still have haters yep That's how I feel I get it. And <laughs> being like a mom too like I think sometimes I'm like they must think I'm so crazy like when they see I'm in this metal band and I'm in like I was gonna exactly. ask you about that too I always feel like the black sheep when when there was school and I would go pick up my daughter from school <laughs> and you know I always felt like the odd mom out because there was just never never anybody like me <laughs> I've, I've actually luckily have like kind of a few moms who are like who get it and like that, that are at my kids school and they came out to a couple of my shows which was amazing because it was That's like cool yeah there was so not something that they would do often but it was like Steph's playing let's all go out and I was like yes a few of them like a few of the shows are like okay we're fans now we're coming out you know it's like and I really like I thought that was so awesome that I could like you know because they probably went to more shows when they were younger and stuff but didn't it's not a thing anymore people don't just go out all the time when they're parents so right. it was a good excuse to get people out and, yeah but That's i'll never true. lose that like i have to go out i think being like having the home daycare too and my husband has been really supportive with that like if i need to go out when covid wasn't happening it was like oh wait you go to a show go like i just go see a jazz show on a tuesday mm -hmm. night because it was like i need to just go see some music for three hours and it would be my like time to unwind and just forget about everything and then the next day was easier because I just had a great show the night before I could wake up in the morning and it's like yeah okay yeah I'm fine I'm great I'm in a great mood <laughs> yeah you had to get it out you mm -hmm. had to you had to release that stress from your body yeah uh, and now like even just like not having any shows has been difficult but the streams has kind of helped it's like at least we have some music to watch but it's some days I'm like oh man I just need time out of the house so I go for walks or whatever and uh, embrace nature a little bit more 
but I can't wait to get back to our music. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> how I feel. I cannot wait. I'm patiently waiting and I will continue to patiently wait, but it's it's starting to get hard. At least there's more shows like on the horizon and mm. I'm pretty confident they're going to stream those. So yeah, uh, that that's good. I, I will take that. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good that right now. <laughs> I'll take it. I've been very grateful for what we've gotten you know, over this whole thing. They've been good to us. <laughs> Definitely. And I mean, it's been interesting interacting with them during the streams. I mean, anyways, what the band has given us, but you recently did a little one-on-one -on -one hang with Stasic and then you did the Jake Halloween show with me. And yeah, that was so awesome. That was so much fun. I love those. That's another just once in a lifetime opportunity I know. that it, it, like, you're just never going to get that ever again. No, I know. <laughs> as well, like, Everyone says silver lining, like, yeah. Yeah, that was incredible. So talk about what it's been like for you to have that um, experience. Um, yeah, like the the one-on-one -on -one with the band. It's, yeah, like with different... Um, I don't know, it's cool. I think it kind of solidifies that. Like, they're always, like, they're such cool guys. And after the shows, there's often, like, I'm, we're always those fans that, like, stand around the bus and try and talk to the to the members. Before. Like, I remember one, one show in Albany, it was freezing, freezing. It was in January. And we're, like, standing outside the buses to see if we could say hi to them. And they're like, guys, it's, like, so cold. What are you guys doing? And... Yeah, anyway, so I feel like over this course of this pandemic, it's been like this nice way to kind of solidify these connections with the band and a little bit more, especially Stasic because I took lessons with him. But um, yeah, it just makes it feel like you kind of, I don't know, just more connections, really. It's, it's what I find it's all been about. Even other bands, too, it's like everybody's online. Normally, bands are not all like home online. They're on, they're on tour. Or they're doing this and that. But for many months, everybody was just, you know, home and posting and connecting and seeing what you're doing. And I think that's super cool. Like, I still love it. Like, if somebody likes one of my Instagram videos, it's like, oh, man, one of my idols just saw my bass video, you know, like, I'm still in that like, space. For sure. It's really cool, you know? It is really cool. That is yeah. really cool. Yeah. And having the lessons with Stasic was, like, so awesome. He's just really down to earth and, you know easy to talk to and a great teacher I was like the first lesson I was like wow like we went over so much in an hour and there was like no time wasted it was like you know I, I ended up feeling like that was one of the best like lessons I've ever had you know like some teachers are kind of I've had a lot of bass teachers over the years I, I always try and take lessons and I kind of remember little bits from everyone and stuff that they've all taught me and but yeah it was like yeah it was good it was really neat to have that experience <laughs> that's awesome yeah. Yeah. I speak very highly of that whole, whole thing of, of anybody yeah. doing it. So if you yeah. haven't done it, do it. Cause yes, you know, absolutely. they tore a bunch, more, tore a bunch more. You're not going to be able to, to do it. So, oh. you know, take advantage of having that time for sure. Absolutely. I did one with Jake and my husband did too, but I was like so nervous. <laughs> Like, I didn't know what to say to Jake. Like, I found Stasic really easy to talk to. And then with Jake, I was just, like, listening to what he was saying and, like, not really sure. How to he has so much knowledge in his head. And, like, you ask one question and then it's, like, da -da 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 and this and this and this. And I was, like, <laughs> now I know why you're so talented. You have, like, an immense amount of information up there. And just, yeah. But my, my husband had some lessons and he was, like, same thing. Like, wow you know, you can learn a lot from that guy. <laughs> so, yeah, it was really cool. So let's talk about your metal bands and sure. go ahead and say the name because I don't want to say it wrong. So, yeah, I, so it's neo, neon era is how we say it, but it's okay. about neon era. So yeah, they were, they were a band. I joined and replaced their bass player. So they, he had left and they were looking for a new bass player. So I auditioned, I think it was 20, 2018, I think, in the fall. And um, yeah, I kind of went into it like not really, I was just like, am I going to join this heavy metal band kind of thing? Like I didn't know at the time if it was like 
it was one another one of those moments where I was like, can I do this? Should I do this? You know? And then my husband was like, yeah, 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 go for it. So anyways, I've been playing with them since, yeah, 2018. We're just a three piece, um, kind of progressive, heavy, hard rock. A lot of people say metal, but I don't know. I think we're kind of like more new metal sort of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we have... They had an EP that they put out before I joined and I kind of learned all those songs and then we've been, we recorded one single and we just finished recording another one kind of over this pandemic and we're going to release it soon. We have plans to make um, another video, which is like really, really cool. We got some awesome ideas, very artistic and kind of like those old, older 90s videos where like bands actually really put a lot of time into the production of the video and like with, I don't know if you watched our last one, but we kind of had some animation and stuff in that one, which is really cool. And I think it's a fun way to still get that creativity out and kind of not just be like every other band, but kind of show that a little bit more detail is worth it sometimes. So yeah. yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. COVID has obviously put a pause on a lot of it, but we should hopefully get back to it soon. Um, yeah so you could check us out on all social media platforms <laughs> nice yeah i'll link everything and tag yeah. everything yeah. so people get all of that for sure and then if you have anything that you definitely want to make sure you share any videos or whatever just yeah send them my way so i can pass them along so yeah. when was the last show you played then um it was i think november 2019 so just before Kind of the pandemic hit i guess started like it hit kind of january march whatever um our drummer was having some wrist issues so we were kind of planning on going on a little bit of a break um of of playing live so um our last show was yeah in the november and then yeah 2019 i think so it's been a while yeah and we wow. played a lot that year like it was good we had we had gone to toronto for a show and we, we played quite often in town um we're always getting asked to play which is awesome like we constantly have people wanting us to jump on bill, like these bills but they're also parents too they also have kids so it's like jobs kids band like there's kind of yeah always, it's hard you know, like getting can we play this many shows so that's one of the factors you know with being in a band and being a parent and having a job is timing but um yeah we're all really passionate about it so whenever we, we do want to play as much as we can when we get back to it so. nice have you guys done any live streams during this time we haven't no i really want to and i've been kind of pushing it but it's been so hard to even practice because the restrictions are really have been really strict and they both live in quebec which is not actually that far from here it's only like a 15 minute drive but you still have to cross the border <laughs> over and it was closed for a long time so you couldn't even drive over unless you had a really good excuse and then um, now they have, I don't even think you're allowed to have people, like we normally jam at our guitar player's house. He has a, a jam space. And uh, I don't even think they're allowed to have people indoors right now. So we could rent a jam space, but we haven't, our drummer has like a really huge kit. So we've been hemming and hawing about that because it would take so long to set up and take down for like for a couple sure. hour jam. But we may end up doing that because I think we're all pretty desperate to get back to it. But yeah, there was some shows lined up for April here in March with like other bands and they all just got canceled because the restrictions came again. So we're like, it's so like wanting to jump back into it, but I know we're just going to get let down again if we jump on a show or something. But the, the live streaming would be amazing. So I'm hoping <clears throat> if we can get back to even just getting a couple practices in, we could do some sort of live stream because we could just reach so many people. It, it, it's like, it just seems to make so much sense because when you play a show here, you're just playing to the people that live in Ottawa. But if we played a live stream, we could reach all these fans we've got everywhere, right? So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And introduce so many new people too. I mean, if you shared exactly. something in like the Umphreys group or even just friends because yeah. of the band or whatever, and just check yeah. us out, you know, it's yeah, all our family. so many more yeah. ears and eyes. Yeah, sure. I know. And more venues, like I think they should be doing more. I know you've seen me post about that too, but I feel like it, 
I feel like there hasn't been as much as there could be in terms of like venues offering that. Um, but yeah, maybe it's, I think it's expensive too. Maybe that could be one of the other issues, but lots of people have been doing it. I don't know, it's, it's great. It's really kept me going, seeing how many bands have like offered it. And a lot of them have been free, which is cool, but I try and always give a little bit or, you know, buy the streams because I'd be spending so much money in a year on, on going to shows. For sure, anyways. on going to shows anyways. And it's been nice too, because I don't have to worry about a babysitter, which is really, really great. Oh. I've been able to see so much other music that I wouldn't, because I'm so selective about a babysitter, you know, because you just, there's certain things you want to make sure you go see. Yeah. So I can't always go to see certain people that I'd like to see live. And so yeah. it's not the same, of course, but I actually get to see a set of somebody's music because they're doing a live stream and it's that's been really nice too yeah yeah no I love it I think it's great yeah. and we always kind of make like a little party out of it too so it's been great yeah. to like expose them to other music too you know sometimes it's hard in the in the concert setting to yeah. do yeah so. yeah I take my kids to the festivals here and they're always like they're not into the music they just want food or like the fun yeah. things <laughs> <laughs> they're like okay this is too loud or whatever so at home we just put the show on and they get to stay up late because we usually have it so loud and they're they, they love it they just play together play on the computer and then we <laughs> watch our show and it's good and in the summer we set up a whole thing in the backyard which is awesome so we could have a couple people and watch some streams back there so i can't wait to do that again yeah mm -hmm. That'll be nice. That's what I like about the weather getting nicer too, is like now you can have a couple people outside mm -hmm. and it's like better. Yeah. So I saw that you have a music blog. Uh, it's called The Groove Hive, I believe. So mm. talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's kind of been also another one of those long time like goals of mine. Um, you'll see like my very first post I explained it a little bit um in high school I had a stint of being like a little music journalist so um for the local newspaper I would write reviews of albums I would go down and pick up my stack of albums every Friday and every Saturday in the newspaper they had my my reviews so I yeah. loved doing that yeah yeah it was super cool and uh, I got a ton of free CDs out of it, which is awesome. I still have some nice. of them. <laughs> yeah. And just discovering new bands. Like and anyone that knows me knows how much I love new music and new bands and constantly looking for new stuff to listen to. So, yeah, I just decided this year I was going to do it and start a blog. And it's so funny because if you go, I've tried starting blogs before. This isn't my first time, but I never keep up with it. Like I put a couple posts and then. I'm like, I just drop it. So even this time I'm like trying to tell myself con to consistently write in it because life gets in the way and I'm just doing other things. And I, I think I need to be like you and have a calendar and be like, okay, I'm writing in my blog on this day because right now I'm just like, oh, it's been like a month I haven't written in. <laughs> so I need a little bit more structure in my life in that sense, but I love it. I love like listening to an album and, and just kind of actually narrowing in on the details a little bit more and you know sometimes when you play music it's like <clears throat> when I'm cooking or when I'm doing this or that so this allows me to just sit down by myself with an album and write about it and listen to it and it's really cool so yeah I started doing that you can check that out and suggest me albums if you think I should hear I'm kind of sticking to newer stuff right now but um, anything goes there's just so many people that are making amazing music and creating and I think more people and people take my suggestions. People all the time are like, wow, that band you're talking about is so good. And, you know, that always makes me feel really good to know people. Yeah, I bet. Discovered a new band because I wrote about it. First time someone commented, I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's like a good feeling to know that somebody For sure. took my recommendation or, or read it and like liked the band. So, yeah. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Well, I'll make sure to link all that for everybody <laughs> yeah, too, too, and everybody and can check it out. That's awesome. It'll make me like write it more. I have, I have more albums I want to do, but just have to make the time to do it. Thanks for asking about it. <laughs> yeah, that's very awesome. You had mentioned to me another side, like a little side project. Is that what you were talking about or is there something else that you are working on? Yeah. 
no, it's another band. Um, not official yet, but we before COVID, we were practicing pretty consistently. We have a couple songs written, and it's an all-girl punk band. So cool. it's two other moms that um, I connected with, and yeah, we're just like chick punk rock, but it's super fun. And um, I think once we get back to it, we'll be like, yeah, we'll be, we're gonna we don't have a name yet or anything, but we're gonna get like announce all that stuff soon so keep an eye out for that because it's going to be really fun um yeah that's super rad that's yeah. very very cool yeah so yeah all these little things kind of are happening which is motivating to think that i can maybe pursue music more than you know just be the mom life but yeah it's fun it's fun to have different multiple things and people asking me all the time to do things and play bass for them. So I'm like, you know, and I, I turn a lot of it down because I have a daycare and a family and all this other stuff going on. But if I didn't have that, I know I could take on a lot more. <clears throat> so yeah, it's been good. But yeah, I really am really excited about this side project. I hope we can get back to practicing soon too. Nice. Very <sighs> nice. Yeah. So then talk a little bit about your experience of being a woman in the music industry i guess you know in in your music community and just playing music in general as a woman yeah um yeah it's been good like i i'm learning a lot uh, as i go i think um it's definitely empowering to be able to do what i'm doing and like successfully do it <laughs> and like i put a post up recently too and i have felt very supported like on all fronts with it which has been really great um i think there is a, a major tide turning in terms of thinking that women can't do this sort of thing or are not normally doing this sort of thing and it is often the case like sometimes we'll play shows and i'm literally the only woman in four bands on the bill you know that night because that tends to happen a lot here they try and get a lot of bands on one bill and i'm <clears throat> The only girl not always like there has been other bands where there's metal chicks too but um yeah i don't know it's it's i think more women should do it if you have that drive to play music and i like don't let any thing stop you <laughs> it's you know like i don't know i i think yeah i don't know i mean i not if isn't, music isn't for everyone but if you feel that need to do it then go for it because yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. It's good. It's good though that you <laughs> just you've always had a really positive experience and that people have just been really accepting of of you and your talent yeah. and wanting to work with you. So that's really hmm. great to hear. Yeah, yeah. And I think being a woman too is also an advantage in a way because especially these days people are wanting to have more women in every field every aspect you know in workplaces and too i don't know if it's the same in the us but in canada I've, I've noticed it a lot too that all sorts of sectors are trying to have more women um involved but i don't also like i don't want to have an easy way because i'm a woman either like i want to work equally as hard as everybody i want to put the work in i want to you know also not just get a free ride because i'm a woman I want it to be able to like, you know, show that I'm capable of like doing the hard stuff too. <laughs> right, right, right. You don't have to take it easy on you that you can, yeah. you can handle it. I can handle it. Yeah. And I have that kind of tougher mentality sometimes. So yeah. Yeah. No, it's been good. Nice. Yeah. I'm glad. I think I only had one weird comment once playing like an open mic or something. And some old guy was like, oh, you're a girl and play bass. Like, what a surprise, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> I guess women and girls tend to gravitate towards bass. Um, and it's kind of true. There are a lot of female bass players and not as many like lead guitar players. I noticed that in a couple groups I was in, it's really hard to find lead guitar players that are women. Um, so yeah, yeah I don't know, but this is, I'm glad I've been able to find other females that to play with too. It's nice. <laughs> minded for sure absolutely mm. so yeah. talk about some bass players that uh, are an inspiration to you oh i have so many um 
Yeah. Uh, well, Stasek, obviously, has always been one. And Victor Wooten. From, of like, course. From, very early age. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw Ella Fleck open for Dave Matthews, like, one of my first shows. One of, I think the second Dave Matthews show I saw here in Ottawa. And Bella Fleck and the Fleck Jones opened and then Victor Wooten came out for like the longest number 41 they had played like ever. <laughs> it was like 32 minutes. I remember it because I listened to it like so much after that. I had the recording and yeah, he was like a big inspiration early on for me wanting to play bass. I was like watching him going, oh my God, like, like what you can do with this instrument. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I, yeah, I went and saw them in Montreal too when I was like 16 and I met him after and he's super cool. And yeah, he's always been pretty high on my list as an inspiration and I still can't even get half of his techniques. I was trying the other day to play some like Victor Wittenstahl stuff and I was like, he's just like a whole other level of amazing. But anyways, keep, keep trying, keeping at it. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, some women like Tina Weymouth from Talking Heads is like a huge inspiration. Mm -hmm. I love like how she plays and dances and grooves while she's playing. It's like a whole choreographed thing. <laughs> she's still playing bass. It's like, yeah, stop making sense. I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah. Oh, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this other band, Crying Band, I'm sure they're newer, but Laura Lee is like also, I love her bass lines and she's always wears these like amazing outfits and she's a pretty big inspiration to me too. Um, Lee, Chili Peppers, another big one. Mm -hmm. I love playing his bass lines. Yeah, there's so many, there's so many great, but those, those are probably my top ones, I would have to say. <laughs> Those are some really great ones. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you would like to accomplish with your playing? Um, I really want to play like some really cool venues. <laughs> I told someone recently that like I want to play Red Rocks and I know that's a crazy big wild dream. No, it's not. I don't have those kinds of dreams then I'll never, you know. I mean, we've had to answer like as a band. We've done a few like interviews and stuff and it's always my my answer is like I want to play Red Rocks. <laughs> I don't know. I've been there. I saw Humphreys there, and I was like, "This is the most incredible venue I've ever been to." And I think, and I can see it. I can see it in the bands that play there that they're just like they play better. They're playing to like this absolutely beautiful like amphitheater, and the sky is amazing. And I don't know. That's kind of one of my dreams, but that's huge. Other than that, it's just I don't know, just to keep loving what I'm doing and. I think that's um, like one of my fears in terms of like switching to music full time is that I would not enjoy it if it's my job and I'm relying on it 24 seven, you know, I think that's, I have to get over that. And I think if I just learn to know that I'm going to love it, even if I do it full time, then I should just go for it. But yeah, yeah. And just to keep growing as a musician and keep learning new things and Keep putting myself out there, trying to like, you know, be yeah. always grow, always be better than I was the day before. Every time you practice, you get better, and yeah, <clears throat> nice. So, if you could sit in with anybody that wasn't Umphreys, who would it be? <laughs> um. Oh, um. I don't know. That's maybe. Something really funky, I think, would be fun. Um, I really, oh, another inspiration I didn't talk about was George Porter from The Meters. Mm. That would be really fun if The Meters were ever, like, still playing. Yeah. A few Meters tunes I could sit in on. Although that would be, like, crazy to replace George Porter, but... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Own it, girl. <laughs> One of those. That would be awesome. Um, uh... I, there's one video of um, Laura Lee from Quine Band and she sat in with Wu-Tang Clan and it's on YouTube and the shoes just looks like she was having like the best time and she's literally holding down the groove for Wu-Tang Clan and I was like that is badass that is like yeah. the most badass thing I've ever seen and that would be really cool you know just like something epic <laughs> like, anyways 
Yeah, yeah definitely something epic like that. That's, <laughs> something epic. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sick. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I was just like, wow, ah, that's so badass, you know? <laughs> this chick rocking the bass, holding it down for Wu Tang while they like rap things. For real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. So if you could replace Stasic on any tune, what would it be? Um, I guess I would have to, I don't know. Puppet string is pretty fun. That's a fun bass one. Yeah. Um, I, it took me a long time to learn the intro to that. And when I finally got it, I was so proud of myself because <laughs> it's like, there's a lot going on at the start of that one. Um, um, yeah. Come and I, August, I just learned the baseline to that one recently would be fun. Um, I don't know. I would just, I would just love to jam with all of them. And like, they're so like the improvising is what I love about Umphrey so much too, is we can just be playing and then go into something crazy and just feed off each other. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. Probably one of those ones. <laughs> <clears throat> So, I mean, I'm what, like maybe 10, 15 minutes from Canada. I'm not very far at all. So I really don't consider Canada international, but you're an international um freak, I guess. So what would be some challenges of being an international um freak? Hmm. Um, well, everything is more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> shipping uh, yeah we talked about that <laughs> you know when i buy a stream it costs me a lot more than it costs you guys because of the, the exchange um no uh yeah i i guess just they don't play here the last time they played here was 2000 and uh when was it i don't even remember now was it 2012 or 2013 i think in Toronto and they haven't been back since. So <clears throat> you're always having to go to the States to see them because <laughs> they never play here. But I get it, like they just don't have the fan base here. I think even when they did play here last, they like, they didn't sell out the entire venue um, just because they don't play here often enough. I don't think enough people know about them. But um, yeah, I don't mind going to the States though. We've made lots of friends. So when we do go down to see them, we kind of get some visits in and it's an excuse to go traveling. I, I like it. Right, my husband For sure. Planning trips is fun. I wouldn't say that's a challenge. It's kind of a fun thing. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. Other than just not ever, not, not getting to see them as much as I would like because they don't always play near here and it's expensive to constantly be traveling. Um, <clears throat> that would be the biggest challenge, I guess. I'm sure I would hit up way more shows if they were playing closer. They do a couple of the upstate New York, which we usually go to. And then, you know, sometimes we'll take a bigger trip to see them. But other than that, yeah, I just wish they played around closer so we could just, you know, on a weekend drive down and see them and it's quick, you know. For it's, sure. It's like a whole chunk of time off to go see them, which you, you already do. Like when we do see them, we have to take time off usually, but um, it would just make it easier. Right. Uh, the people that live close or the people in Chicago they get to see them probably or used to see them a lot because they play around them more and stuff yeah West, it seems to be you mentioned Red Rocks you've been to and what are some other places that you've been able to to hit up probably you've been to to Detroit is not no Detroit's no. farther from us it's more yeah, it's kind of further west. I think I, I looked it up because they're playing there on the, this upcoming tour. I was like, how far of a drive is it? And it's it's still pretty far. I mean, we could fly, but getting over the border right now is not easy. Our, our, our prime minister is not making it very easy for people. And you have to pay to get back in. So doing any of the upcoming shows is not an option, I don't think, for us. But um, otherwise, a lot of New York, like New York City, Albany, Rochester, like Vermont, see them in Burlington quite a few times. Um, yeah, I think Red Rocks was the furthest we've gone. A lot of it is New York. Yeah, I've seen them in Toronto, I think three times now. And then, um, yeah, we always hit up all the upstate New York shows really <laughs> in Vermont. That seems to be 
we get pretty lucky here though like we'll get we used to get you know buffalo shows and then rochester and yeah uh pittsburgh and cleveland and yeah. you know for me that's all kind of you know a nice okay. little like yeah, yeah. Kinda like a weird oval sort of shape <laughs> but it's it's nice yeah it's good for sure and mow down i mean they've had oh, a couple yeah. of mow downs yeah. so that's that's, right. that's always been really nice to catch yep. them there and yeah i've gone to most of the ones they've played at mow down i think i've been to almost every one of Humphreys is there i'm like yep i'm going yeah that's a great festival i love mow down so much yeah me too it's probably my favorite festival like yeah. ever it's just so small and such a family tiny vibe and yeah and just always great bands too like for what mm -hmm. it is you know there's always a great lineup and yeah i love how small it is if you need to go back to your tent it's not like a long super long walk it's like oh yeah it's gonna run back i'll be right back <laughs> you know like it's always i always love that about it you're not hiking all over just to get around it's everything's close so, yeah for sure, for sure. So when was your first Umphrey show? It was um, the Green Apple Festival in New York City, 2006. So when I first moved to Ottawa, within like a few weeks, my brother and some friends were like, we're going down to this festival in New York City. I'd only lived here for a couple of weeks at that point. <clears throat> and they were playing, it was this, I think Peter Shapiro put on the festival. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, free on the streets. Strange, strange folk played. I'm pretty sure Victor Wooman was even there. Playing. I don't know if it was all of Bella Fleck, but I feel like he was there too. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. And I just went. I have. I still have pictures. I met Brendan after the show. I have a picture with my dreadlocks and him. We were both so young, and uh, that kind of started it. And then that year, we saw them at Modown that year, and then couple nights in Burlington so it was like kind of a love I'd already been listening to them before then but that was the first show I guess it wasn't a, a real like show experience because it was an outdoor street festival but that was my first official show nice and then you were just kind of all in from there <laughs> yeah yeah and I think when I met Matt too and then we, he, he liked them a lot and we just kind of grew that love for them together kind of became our band um our friends love like all sorts of different jam bands and stuff, but like, and, and Umphreys too, but Umphreys was always like our thing. It was like, if they were playing, we were going to see them. It kind of, yeah, it became our, our thing, but yeah. That's really great. You shared yeah. that in the Conduit Magazine yeah. um, love couple thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was really like, it was insane. The amount of people that Crazy. just bombarded <laughs> with the messages it was just like me and leah were like oh my god there's so many people like we have to take this post down because there's so many that's but amazing. then that's how i felt like when we started reading everything it was like look at all these people that are together because of this band or together like stronger or whatever your story is like there's this common thing and it was just like that's pretty crazy and incredible and just like wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's so great you guys did that and and i've seen it too i see all these couples like on social media it's like, wow you know like they're so strong and they're love on freeze and yeah, it's, it's really neat to see it, whether they met at a show or they just share that combined love that so many people share that is amazing. I was like, wow, there's so many when I was looking in the magazine. <laughs> we had to actually like tell some people that, that we were cut off, like we couldn't, because it would have been just the whole thing. There were so many pages and it was like, this is so great, but we have to, we got to stop. <laughs> there are so many people. <laughs> But it was so great, and I'm so thankful for everybody's participation in that, too. It was so awesome to read everybody's story and see their pictures. So yeah. that was very cool. Yeah. Yeah, as you saw in there, we went to Humphreys for our honeymoon. We had been together for like 10 years, but never got married, and then decided in 2016. Yeah, because we met in 2006, that we were going to just get married, have a party, had an amazing band. It was a great wedding, and then... We were just, it was spur of the moment, Umphreys had announced Red Rocks, and then we were just like, 
let's go like, like let's do one freeze at red rocks and then we're like let's do vip <laughs> and i was just like okay we're doing it and it was incredible so we got to meet them all after and yeah that was like perfect because it was it's always been our thing we've always gone to Humphrey shows together and like you know or watching streams together even before covid we were always watching streams because we can't make it to that many shows so i'm really thankful they've always offered streams but it's kind of always our thing it's when life gets crazy it's like you know just listen i'm free yeah. watch i'm free or our kids know when we go on road trips and matt often's like it's just Umphreys. We just listened to Umphreys for like six hours when we were driving to his parents. Even the other day, we were listening to something and Abby's like, this reminds me of driving to Grammy and Grampy's because it's like this jam that we just think Matt loves driving to. It's like Umphreys is so intertwined into our life in so many ways. It's like, I yeah. love that. That's so great though. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So if you had to choose a favorite album, which one would you pick? Some people, it's really hard to choose. Some people can like pick right away it's interesting yeah well there was a post the other day about similar skin and i i do really like that album I, I know people don't as much but i find it's got a like more of kind of a 90s vibe to it and i love the linear like i love the opening to it i don't know there's, i think there's some hidden moments in that album that people might miss but um i've always really liked it um I love I love the older stuff too though anchor drops and safety numbers are kind of what started me on them freeze so those are always close. Um, but in terms of which ones I put on more it's been the newer stuff like it's been similar skin and I like it's not us and I do like I've actually been playing them more than the older ones, I like the way that the band has has progressed and grown I like the way that they write. Um, and how much they've evolved. I love Mantis too. I don't know. I can't pick one. <laughs> I don't think I love them all. Yeah, it's like picking a favorite song. It's so hard. I think yeah. it feels like almost like where you are, not even that day, but sometimes in your life, like yes, kind of like your just yeah. your season you're in and and everything else. Because I will listen to the same song, so many versions, and this and that and everything else, and then just sometimes you'll hear something and it'll just hit you differently. And you're just like, Oh, okay. Bayless. <laughs> you're just yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. That happens to me all the time. And then I just get stuck on that one song for a little while. Cause it was like, it's just what I needed to hear at this time in my life or whatever. Yeah. And, or like, I, I think Chris posted something about search for recently. And then I was like, Oh yeah, that's such a great song. It's such like, a great song. <laughs> and I started listening to that all the time because I was like, yeah, I forgot how good this is. And I don't mind that album either. Death by Stereo. People are always hating on it, but I'm like, I really liked it when it came out and I still really like it. I don't know. That's how I feel about it. I don't like, uh, what is this song? Miami Virtue. Like, I, I, I'm not like the biggest fan of it. I mean, it gets, it, it does really well live, you know, they really allow it to, to wander and I enjoy that, but I think the rest of the album is much better without yeah. it, you yeah. know, and I think maybe that's kind of what turned people off a little bit, was just like, you know, you're like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> I like it. I don't know. I'm a weirdo. I like it. And I remember after they released it and we went and saw them in Syracuse and they played it and I was like, yeah, we're playing my new review. I loved it. I don't know. I'm, but I'm not like, I don't know. I don't tend to fall into the same, like, with all the Umphreys fans. <laughs> like, I, I'm like, I don't get it sometimes when I'm on those. Like, why does everybody hate on this? It's not that bad. But I just like what I like, I guess. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that at all. So what are your, a uh, couple of your favorite venues? I mean, of course, Red Rocks, but what are some other favorite venues? Um, we, I love the Palace Theater in Albany. Yeah. Um, that's a really great place. Quite a few times and our friends live down there. So it's always like special to go see them and go visit our friends. And um, yeah, I love that. I love uh, up here in Canada, the Metropolis in Montreal is really great. Um, I haven't seen as many shows there recently, but um, growing up, I, I live in, I grew up in Moncton and I would take the train to Montreal and see shows all the time. And uh, I always love going to the Metropolis. It's a great venue. Um, uh, yeah, what else? I don't know. Beacon Theater was really amazing when we saw 
Humphreys there for two nights. I really want to go back there. That was my first time there. So I was just admiring the architecture. It was so incredible. And everyone was super cool. Like I love it when I when you go to a venue and like even the staff is cool. Like when you go get beers or any everywhere, like security is cool. That's like my favorite thing. It's like, all right, there's like a good vibe here. It's not you know, I don't feel like for rough. sure. And, you know, some venues you go to and it's like, you know, they're really pushy or whatever. And it's like, yeah, no, I just want it to be like a good vibe from everyone. So, yeah, I had a good vibe there. And Palace Theatre is like that too. It's super chill staff, which is awesome. Uh, yeah. And uh, Red Rocks obviously is probably my favorite. And I love out outdoor venues. Outdoor concerts are always awesome. Yeah, for sure. It's something about being, you know, outside and yeah. being in the moonlight and having the show and everything it's different 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure and I'm uh you know dance in the grass without your shoes and like little area sometimes so that always feels nice too yeah I'm the same I am either at the back or like right at the front on the rail it depends on the band <laughs> I'm either yeah. like chilling at the back or I'm right up as close as I can get I'm freeze I usually try and get really close both Matt and I like being if we can at a venue, if it's not seated, we're like, we want to be up there. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I like being up there. My husband doesn't. So sometimes he'll humor me and, you know, like, especially at like summer camp, it's easier where I can just like go up and yeah. he'll have a spot. And it's kind of nice though, too, because then like he has a place. So if like halfway through, I'm like, I just need a breather. Like there's, a, we already have like a spot. So it's kind of nice to have, you know, a spot somebody who kind of holds a, a better yeah. space like a place to chill for a minute <laughs> it's nice. usually like if we're at festivals it's our taper friends who have two friends that tape and they're always by the soundboard so it's like you know you can always like go back to them and you'll know where they are <laughs> and then nice they yeah I miss that so much <laughs> yeah yeah for sure how many shows have you been to uh I'm face um I don't know it's not like a huge number maybe close to 20 I don't know. I've seen them at so many festivals and stuff too. I have to, I have to count again, but yeah, having kids and being in Canada for many years, I didn't see them more than like once a year. Yeah. Just go down to like one show. I remember I was pregnant. I've seen them pretty much every time I've been pregnant because <laughs> I saw them when I was pregnant with my first. And then my second, we went to Buffalo to see them and yeah. So yeah, it's just life has made it hard to see them a lot, but they're definitely the band I've seen more than any other band. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, me too. I think maybe Mo a little bit more, but not much more now. Like Umphreys is definitely surpassed it at this point. Yeah, I saw I saw Mo a lot in the earlier days. And then it kind of switched to Humphreys. <laughs> yeah. Well, being from kind of this area not and not being far from this area, it's it's easy to see Mo for sure. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. That's why I saw a lot of them too, you know, going to Saranac or yeah. Rochester or wherever. I mean, it's Yeah, I love far. That's another great little spot. Yeah. 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 So what are some ways that Umphreys inspires you? Um... I think I love that, like, because I followed them since pretty much the beginning, maybe not like super early days, but since they were a small band, I love seeing how much they've grown and how they like work their asses off and, you know, put in the time, put in all the touring, put in like everything. And like, I just love seeing how you can go from being this tiny band that's, you know, probably sleeping on couches and having to tour all these different cities to like playing three nights at Red Rocks. And every time I see any band do that, I'm always just like so inspired. Um, <clears throat> but I love it that they're just, they are who they are and they, they create music together and always, they don't sound the same all the time. You know, that's what I always loved about them and what I love about any band that can do multiple genres and make it work in a night you know mm -hmm. like <laughs> it's like yeah. some of them play like heavy metal and then funk and then rock and then some 80s stuff <laughs> it's like and it kind of all works so I uh, that's always inspired me that they can do that and I love it because I'm such a like I love so many styles of music that 
can go to a show and see that in one night. It's like amazing. So they, they don't, they think outside the box as a band, right? They don't, they never get bored of Unfreeze because they're always keeping you on your toes or throwing in a new cover or throwing in this new jam. And it's like, oh, you know, it's fresh. Mm-hmm. I've always kept things fresh. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. You definitely do not get bored. Yeah. <laughs> They put out lots of new music all the time, which is good. For sure. And we're spoiled, too, as fans. So, Yeah. Yeah, it's good. And I like, that's the other thing that inspires me, is they do treat their fans pretty good. Like, they connect with uh, with fans, and you don't feel like they're unreachable. Like, oh, I can never talk to them. Like, they're always kind of around and inspiring and giving back, which is cool, too. Right. And just super down to earth and not rock star, Mm -hmm. you know, like they're just not like the picture in your mind of when you kind of would say like rock star or something is not, No, they're not like that at all. And that's really inspiring for me personally. They make it work with, you know, balancing the touring musician and, Mm -hmm. you know, being successful in something you love and having a family like that's personally inspiring to me you know because it's hard (laughs) (laughs) they're like real people like I remember asking Stasek I'm like how do you do this like you know I have parents and he they have this other side project and like everything you do you do it so well (laughs) it's like it's just amazing to see that they're like normal people who have lives and kids and everything but they're also crushing like this music that they're making constantly and putting out stuff it's like wow it's amazing Yeah, yeah definitely so if you could hear Umfreeze cover something that they haven't done yet, what would you pick? Um, probably another Tool song. Um, I love their cover of 46 and 2 so much. Like, I tell them that all the time. But I would love to see them play, like, any other Tool song. Because it's really hard to cover Tool, and they can do it. You know, like, Chris can do the drums, and... The vocals, which is amazing. And um, yeah, I don't know, probably just any, yeah, like I love, I love all tool, but I, I would love to see them do another one. Maybe the pot or uh, like lateralis would be really cool if they would yeah. ever want to, you know, dive into something like that. <laughs> I would just, my mind would be blown <laughs> again. Yeah, that would be incredible. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I mean, Stasic would be for it. It would just be convincing, like Chris, I think. And yeah. definitely Chris it would be the one that I would need the most convincing, I think, to take yeah. that on. <laughs> I've, I've, like, I've just, I've watched that cover so many times and just like, it, like, it's not easy to drum and sing and he pulls it off. Like, it's so incredible. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, yeah. yeah. They're, as musicians, they're all so when they like they take on what they do and they do it like well with these covers they make sure that they're doing them like justice which is really cool <clears throat> that's what i really appreciate about them too like they could easily play so many things yeah like i'm listening to the radio which i mean i don't listen to the radio often but you know anytime i'm listening to anything you know classic rock or even some newer stuff and it's like oh my God, like this would be so good, but they wouldn't do it because they just have so much respect for the artist or the original song or whatever that, you know, they're like, we could, no, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be right. So I'm just like, but no, it would be right. (laughs) They do like their Rush covers too, which a lot of bands won't like cover Rush and they, like, they do it really well. Mm -hmm. I'm always just like, well, they... You know, and they're so modest about it too. They're like, oh yeah, it was, you know, it, it was all right. You know, and you're like, no, but it was really good. So good job. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I have one final question for you and I would love for you to describe Umphreys in three words. Um, say like progressive groove rock. I like that. Yeah. (laughs) There's, I I think Aqueous is another band that are considered groove rock. And I'm like, I love groove rock. I think that's like a nice thing to, like a way to 
express jam band in another form. <laughs> I like that a lot. It definitely, because there's just so many things. I mean, you could do that with, with any word, you know, and, and have say certain words and kind of have somebody say the first thing that kind of comes to mind. And sometimes I feel like depending on who you ask, of course, jam band can kind of bring some negative connotation with it for some people. And I think it can turn people off when you're trying to talk to somebody about Umphreys. I feel like that people just like, uh, oh, no. No, no thank you. <laughs> and it's not for everybody. And I, I played them for people too. Uh, like I played something off of Zonky for someone and he was like, you know, like it, I forget what song it was, but he was just like, no, like it, it wasn't for him. And I get it because it wasn't the original of whatever it was we were listening to. I forget what it was. But, um, but then other people are like, See, see something or see a cover they do and they're like wow that's like really impressive who is this band you know and then I'm always nervous I'm like okay so I gotta show them the right songs because the wrong song could turn them off because they're so like they're so diverse in everything they do like it, you could be listening to something really heavy or then it could go to like something 80s like disco vibe you know and it's like depending on the person you're showing them they could it could totally throw them off or they could really dig it so I'm always nervous to show people on and everybody knows I talk about Umphreys so much. Oh, that band you love Umphreys, you know, but they don't always get it or I don't know how to like introduce them in the right way. <laughs> so, For sure. You know, I'm sure you're the same, right? Like it's like once you get it, you get it. And there are people who get it, but then there are people who just like would never get it. <laughs> there are some people that just would never get it. And they're the same people that, you know, when I say, oh, we're, we're going here, or I've seen this band so many times, and they're just like, I've never even been to a show that many times, like any concert that many times. Like, how could you go see the same thing that many times? Because it's never the same thing every time, right? It's always like a completely different show every time. Which yeah. Is That's why we keep coming back for more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. like in a way you know just all of live music but i'm free definitely something about their shows that just takes takes the cake you know when you're there it's like there's never a dull moment i never want to go pee i just want to be there the whole time you know like it's like you don't want to leave your spot i don't want to miss anything I just, just want to absorb in every moment of it yeah. and it's the like i think it's how they build like my husband and i talk about it all the time like they're just they have these epic moments that other jam bands don't have you know, where they like build this ascension of a song and then all of a sudden it's just like, oh, like glory or like, I don't know, there's so many times in jams where they do that and then you just have this feeling of like, I don't know, everything is just let go and you're all just in this moment. And mm -hmm. yeah, you know, what I love about them so much is yeah. epicness. Yeah. yeah. And very soon we will be able to feel that again. I know, I can't wait. Even just talking about it, it's like, oh. And so, I'm so torn because it's just like when it does come time to travel and stuff, I'm like, okay, I gotta go see my family in New Brunswick, but I also want to go see Amtrys. <laughs> no. Okay, gonna like figure out which one I'm gonna do first. <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys in a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. Mama needs a girl's trip. Yeah, exactly. Are you doing Iceland? I, I saw that you had posted. You guys had tickets? Yeah, we had tickets and we got the vouchers for our flight. So awesome. We will be there. Now comes like the planning. And I will be honest, like I'm really excited, but right this minute, the idea of planning a trip of that magnitude gives me a little bit of anxiety. Like I can't do it just yet. No. And it's like one year from now, right? Like, so it's, and that's pretty fast in terms of like planning a trip. It feels like there's a lot and, and a lot of unknowns right now still with like, in terms of how safe everything is going to be even a year from now. So, yeah. yeah, I get it. But it's, it's nice to have something to at least kind of like look forward to. And, and maybe on the days when I am feeling excited about it, that's the day we'll book an airbnb but right now i was i mean i was excited but then it was just like oh not yet <laughs> i know i was like oh, should we try and get tickets because that's his birthday weekend like but then it was like i don't know i don't know if i want to jump into that 
right now. <laughs> like it feels huge. Yeah, it does. And and also, I mean, I will admit, like, kind of the the PTSD of having everything just not happen. I mean, it was so awful though, because I was feeling so nervous that in a way I was kind of relieved that they had announced it because I, it was just starting to come to the point where I just didn't want to go. And then I was feeling like if I decided not to go and they had it and it was epic and then I would have like FOMO for life because I didn't go. So in a way I was kind of like happy that they had rescheduled yeah. that it was like a I knew it was the right decision, you know, because you just kind of would always have that in the back of your mind, but there was so much happening at that time that it was just like such anxiety about do we go, do we not go and the kids and it was just awful. Are you going to bring the kids or leave them? Home? We were going to leave them, but just because of everything happening with like, there was already talks about school closings. And I, my biggest concern was getting my husband and I getting stuck in Iceland, like yeah. having something happen while we were gone and they closed sure. the borders. And then like, we're stuck away from our kids for like how long. And for us, we don't live by a lot of family. So getting babysitters is hard sometimes anyways. And so to be gone for like, at this point, what, like a year or something, like it was the worst anxiety to just, to think about that. Like that was my biggest fear. And I'm like, I can't do that to my kids. Like, and I would not have any fun the, those three nights, like I would have just been so worried until I was on the plane to go home and it wouldn't have been any fun. Yeah. So I was just kind of relieved that yeah. it, it turned out the way it did. Not really, but I am, you know, yeah, like, totally get it. yeah, you know, it was just the exact same, right? All those stresses and unknowns, like while you were there would just be too much. <laughs> and I know I wasn't the only one that felt that way, you know, like there are other parents that were going that felt that way. And obviously other people that weren't parents, like you don't want to get stuck in a foreign country for a year when you're not prepared for it. So, you know, I'm glad that they made that decision because it just, it was a, we're all going to enjoy it much more when we can finally get there. So yeah, it's, it exactly. was definitely the best thing. So. Yeah, Matt was in the States when it all happened. He was in San Francisco for work and he had tickets to the Amphreeze show in Oakland. And it all like within that week, it was just so fast. Like the borders were going to close and he was like, had to get back early before they were going to close because his boss, his boss kind of like knew in advance. He was like, they're going to close the borders. Like you got to get home, like get an earlier flight and go. And then, yeah, all the shows started to get canceled and stuff. And then it did, like he got home and then it was like the next day or the day after Borders were shutting down. Everything was shutting down. It was like, yeah, it was stressful. So you can, like, with this whole thing, everything happens so fast, right? Like, to be, you wouldn't want to be there. And then all of a sudden find out the next day that you can't go home. Like, scary stuff. Yeah, it was definitely scary. So I'm glad we we didn't have to make that choice. And we were just. Well, you'll get there, though. You'll get, it'll happen. And hopefully it'll happen this year for you, but I mean, if it doesn't, they're on a mission to play there and that'll just be incredible whenever it does. That's how I feel. I feel like that's going to be the epitome of kind of like the victory here of yeah. like surviving this, you know, that moment that we're there and they all just walk out and you're just like, oh my gosh. Um, that's going to be me anyways, the first show back. I'm just going to be a, a wreck falling my eyes out. I already told my husband, I'm like, prepare for all the emotions. There's going to be laughing and crying and it'll be all of the things. All of the things. Oh man, I can't wait. I hope it happens soon though. I feel so slow still. I'm like, I don't know when I'm going to see them. I feel like, anyways, we'll see. Maybe next year, (laughs) another year, one more year. One more year, hopefully. As soon as they open the border, I mean, the border's not even opened, is it? Oh yeah, I just no. say, like we have super strict restrictions. Like if you go to the states, if you come back, you have to have negative tests. Like you have to test before you get on the plane or whatever. Test is when you get back. Wait in a hotel until your test results come back that are designated by the government. If you have a negative test result, you can go home. But if you have a positive one, you have to like stay in these designated hotels. 
and like pay all this money or pay all this money to not do that. Like, it's just, it's really like wrapping my head around it would just be insane. So I'm just going to wait until it's like normal and I can just cross the border without all this craziness. But vaccine yeah. is so slow up here too, compared to you guys. I feel like everybody's getting vaccinated in the States. I'm like, <laughs> we're like, I don't even know. It's going to be summer. I think before I even get mine or in the fall, maybe. So, yeah. Wow. It's, it's interesting to hear like your, you know, your whole thing, because it is different, even though you're not that far away, but it being a different country, it's, it is, it's so different. It is. Yeah. Especially now it really divides us, you know, in a weird way. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I hope like, I hope it all just works out and everybody gets and things kind of get better and people get vaccinated and there's less cases but right now it's still from where I live in Ontario it feels very like oh, everybody's done another lockdown is coming another this like we're just still not beating it it feels like so people are just tired of staying in and yeah and we're just really slow we were really slow getting the vaccine so it's like people 80 and 70 like we're, we're going down the list can get theirs and right now it's like 70 year olds can get theirs and like healthcare workers and stuff and then it'll slowly trickle down to like just regular people can get them but yeah i don't know i don't i don't, I don't know if this summer we'll see giant tours yet like i'm starting to see some bands announce tours but it'll still be like an outdoor kind of show kind of summer i think <laughs> For sure. And I think because you're going to actually be able to do more capacity outside anyways, you know, you can socially distance people better outside. So, I mean, I think that's what's going to happen is you're just going to play as as long outside as you possibly can in the parts of the country that you can play there. Exactly. I know it's hard for us being up like northern in the States and Canada, like we have limited months of year we can do that. But I think I'll feel more comfortable with that for a while anyways than being indoors. People are like really close together. So like you said, I'm not in a huge rush. I want it to be safe. I don't want to go to a show and end up getting sick from it or whatever I want it to be like. Right. Or just have to deal with all this extra stuff or not feel comfortable and, and just, just be able to be there and just really enjoy it. Like yeah, that's. I want to be able to dance. Some of the shows, like most of the shows here that have been announced are like seating only like very like limited I'm like no if I go to a show I want to be able to get up and dance and move and like not just be stuck refined to my little thing you know that's not the experience for sure I can't do it I can't even do it when I'm watching like a live stream or something I'm like I have to get up and dance around yeah <laughs> <sighs> anyways I should probably go too it's dinner time but yeah definitely time to feed the yeah. little people <laughs> Uh, mom, life awaits. I know. Yeah, they're probably all going like, what are we eating? What's that? Where is she? We're <laughs> <laughs> starving. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been really, really wonderful. Thank you for taking time and hanging and chatting about just so yeah, much shit. And... I feel like so special. Like, this is really cool. You had like Jennifer Hartswick and all the Empress people and like me. I'm like, that's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, of course. I've been meaning to ask you for a little bit. And when I had the idea of doing some women episodes, I was like, yes. Thank you so much. Like, I really appreciate it. And I love your, like, I love everything you're doing, the podcast and the magazine. And it's so great to see you pursuing all these things and making them work and being a mom. Like, you inspire me too. So thank you. Thank you for your support. I appreciate you listening and sharing and reading and doing all that stuff i really appreciate it and it's just it's so rad i've said this so many times but i just think it's incredibly awesome all the women in the community doing all these awesome things and Crazy. Like yeah and all the creative women in this community is it's really incredible and it inspires me too it's just it's very cool yeah don't let any boundaries like you know hold you back and I, I see that a lot it's like you know there's so many people that push forward like stay six wife too she's always inspiring me like you know admitting that things are tough and just keep going you know it's like you're so true like not, things are messy but it's worth it in the end to get through it all right like yeah, yeah. that's exactly how I feel too is it is 
extremely messy sometimes, but it's, it's worth it. And it's fun. It's yeah. wacky fun. <laughs> <laughs> you got to laugh about it. That's Thank just you. the only way we can get through it sometimes. It can't be boring. Life can't be boring. You can't just live like this mundane life. That's not what my life is about. It's not what your life is about, right? Like you were saying, it's like, you have to have those things that make it fun and enjoyable and different and yeah 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 so thank you for everything you do for the embrace community i think it's been awesome seeing all this like I, I i don't know i feel like being in canada i might have been a little bit like more not as connected with the Umphreys like community but now over covid and being online more i'm like starting to meet people and meeting you and all these i'm like wow oh, it's really great there's like this awesome community i didn't even really know about that much but lots of great people and yeah all sharing the same love same yeah for sure and and like we said at the very beginning you know doing I mean selfishly I love being able to have conversations with people like this but being able to connect with people online even just in the community has been great because we don't usually get to connect like that it shows and you yeah. know it's been really great to have that extra time to connect in in chat rooms during live streams or yeah. you know whatever like that's been really cool too yeah yeah absolutely and having private Jake shows. <laughs> Definitely. The moral of the story is have one. <laughs> have one. Absolutely worth it. Definitely. Yeah. You'll not be disappointed in the least. <laughs> you still offering them? I, feel like I don't know. I haven't checked, but I would love to do another one. But I think he might be. I don't know. Take advantage before they're back on tour. <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. All right. Well, I will let you go so we can both feed our families yes thank you so much again for doing this yeah absolutely and feel free to send me anything that uh you want me to like include in anything so oh yeah links and things yeah all right awesome well, i'll talk to you later hey bye right. bye